So, in the meantime, how have you guys been? How's, uh, how, how have your weeks been? Uh, been, been okay-ish for the most part. Just mostly worked and streamed and stuff. How about you? Uh, it's been, uh, hectic week to say the least. How's between, that? uh, well, between family drama and, uh, other stuff. Gotcha. Hi, Elise Vermillion. Thank you for the first time chat. Welcome on in. We're just about ready to get started. Set it out of self prolo messages now, though. <clears throat> Mind we call ourselves the Index Elite. I don't know. No. <laughs> Do I look like a codex to you? I'm not gonna be that. Mu I'm not gonna be that elitist. I'm an index. <laughs> yeah, it's a reference. It's a wrestling reference. <laughs> oh, that's oh. right. Oh, we know what was wrestling stuff. I do Yo. not know wrestling. Not much for me either. The main thing I know about wrestling is that while it is staged, like, staged like a, while it is staged like kind of a play, it is very physically demanding because they actually do, they actually do beat the shit out of each other. Hello, everyone! Hello YouTube, hello chat, hello booklets, welcome on in. It's time for episode 4 of the Transcribecast. It's been a minute and a half since our last episode, I am sorry about that. But with all the Comcast issues I've been having, it's been really difficult to set this up. We could have done this last week, but... The problem was, I was having so many issues with trying to get Comcast to work for more than an hour that uh, I didn't want to run the risk of having the stream crash while we were setting up. Hi Bridgewater, we're doing a thing, and thank you for the hydrate. Before we get started, I would love my three lovely guests today to introduce themselves. Hi Michael! Let's start with the first person on my left, Jake. Hey there, I'm Jake Callisto. Um, I'm a dragon YouTuber who likes playing RPGs and um, D and D. Although, um, <laughs> I'm also here with my um, other half, sort of so to speak, Lena Callisto, who is my character's adopted sister. Hello, my name is Lena Callisto, and I enjoy uh, video games, anime, manga, uh, professional wrestling, which has already been mentioned in the chat, Elise, yep. <laughs> and uh, also, I'm also into indie games as well. Hopefully I can like uh, get in touch with some indie developers as well for the Backlog Base. Hell yeah. And last but not least, we have Keijo Cove. Keijo oh. Or is it Keijo? Yeah. Keijo, 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 whatever you want to say, really. I just won't call you Shirley. <laughs> Classic Keijo, reference, hit the dab. Keijo is the name of the anime, right? Where you use your body to uh, knock people oh, out of water. You. Found that out after I picked this name, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you want to talk about Kaijo! <laughs> oh my gosh, Kaiju. <laughs> there, there's actually oh. an, a manga adaptation of it. That's like goes longer than the anime, and it's like oh, it goes really in depth on like the strategy that goes into jutting your butt out to knock someone off a platform. Oh yeah, like uh, one of my favorites is the butt tack on Titan. That's that's in the uh, Funimation dub. I I agree. Jade's model is super cute. And and uh, when it comes to when you said Keijo, I thought you were talking about Kaiju. I was like, oh, are we talking about uh, Ultraman? 
So, Keijo, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm just some nerd on the internet. <laughs> I believe you're a witch. <laughs> yes, I am an Autumn Witch VTuber. Uh, I stream a variety of games, basically anything aside from first-person shooter and MOBA. I've uh, been streaming for nearly a year now. Hey, congrats on that! Thank you. I knew I recognized you from somewhere. I posted on a response to, to your Twitter a little while back. Yes, you did. Oh, good to meet you in a uh, semi-person, <laughs> so to speak. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. I need to get I need to get to know uh, most of the VTubers, but mostly I got to know some of the people oh, in the retro gaming community as well. I'd rather get to know the babe. Oh, that's where I just heard that's a weird sound effect. That, that was my alarm going off. It scared the crap out of me. Now oh, then, I see. Uh, now that all my self promos are set out, sent out finally, we can take a moment to talk about tonight's episode. Tonight, it's more of a... It's more of a recap. Yes, a bridge, the babe with the power. Thank you for getting that. Uh, we're doing a recap of our past three episodes and talking about the future of the podcast and just uh, going over a bit of lessons with my guests today. Well, I appreciate you bringing me on the show again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jade was here for episode one. Hello? Here, I just coughed for a second. Didn't want you oh, to yeah, you, you guys all that. mute. You guys all muted for a second. I looked at the, I looked at the call. I saw three mute symbols. <laughs> no, no, that's Oh, fine. God, I said something terrible. No, I'm just oh. muting when somebody else is talking, so I don't end up coughing or making noises or something. Same here. That's what I'm doing, too. Because I just did cough a little bit, and I don't want to to hear that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now then, episode one, we talked about Kiki, Momo, and you. Episode two, we were talking about, let me bring up a little, uh, come on. We talked about accents and dialects for episode two. For episode three, we had kind of a little, uh, just shooting the shit, talking about, uh, stereotypes that come with accents. So, for now, I would like to cover some of this information and recap it. When it comes to voice training, I I will say this again, time and time again, whenever I have an episode of this. It will not, it is not something you can do overnight. Does this stereotype have Dolby noise reduction? What? What are you talking about? Pardon? <laughs> a, a Bridgewater's being snarky. It's practice like everything. I... I'm a semi-professional voice actor. I don't have any, like, experience under my belt with jobs or anything, but I have been fucking around with my voice for 14 years. I hear a little bit of static on your end. Is that just me, though? There shouldn't be. Sounds fine to me. Maybe I just... I have, I have, my, I have my mic muted. Hello? Hello? Okay, I just it out. Oh, stereotype is in model of tape. A Bridgewater, fuck off! Oh my gosh. Fuck off with that pod! No, no, that, 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 that's no. bad. Bad a Bridgewater, bad. Bad timeout for you. Mommy would have put you in timeout. So, I will say, when I started my transition, I was like, <clears throat> I wasn't used to talking like I am now. I only spoke when I really had to and I was kind of I was kind of mumbly and oh, kind of around this area 
I suppose I, it's been so long that I've lost my quote-unquote regular voice that uh, this is now my normal speaking tone. But I when I started my transition, I thought I would never get to where I am now. I thought uh, I had episodes where I thought it was pointless, there was going to be no hope for me, but my vocal coach told me that it's just persistence and practicing your skills and understanding Kiki and Momo, mostly. Because a lot of languages have shape language and all that, but they have similarities where sharper sounds are associated with masculinity and softer sounds are associated with femininity. So think of it like this. You see two blobs, one is covered in spikes, one is covered in soft round edges. Which one is named Kiki? Which one is named Momo? I don't know what the edge would answer this because I kind of already did my take on that before last episode. <laughs> yeah, but the whole thought experiment is people normally associate Kiki with the sharp one, Momo with the soft one. And that's kind of like the whole crux of this podcast. I'm here to help anyone and everyone understand that there's more to sounding like the person you want to be than just Oh, I'm gonna change the, I'm, I'm going to change the level of my voice to sound deeper and deeper and sound like I'm a different person. No, there's more to it than that. And yes, it's a bumpy road. Yes, it's a steep road. But once you hit the top of the hill, it's smooth sailing all the way down. And if you fall off the bike on your way up, I'm here to help you get back up. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you reach that hill. Okay? Sounds fair enough to me. I want everyone to know that. Yeah. Everyone that tunes into these episodes, all my guests, whether you're struggling, whether you're not, I want you to know I'm here to support ya. So. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Jade. So, my wonderful guests, how long have you been uh, practicing with your voices in particular? For me, it's been a few months, so it's not entirely the best, but it's it's gone it's gone a long way so far, I'd say. Uh, this, this is what yeah. I can use as my female voice, at the very least. Not the best, but at least compared to yours. But I, I would think that I did pretty good, despite that. I'm kind of a special case. Uh, I'm told that because uh, I spent a lot of time playing video games by myself on the PlayStation 2 with no voice acting and reading the voices myself. That's how I got my practice. And then I went to a professional vocal coach. Like, someone that I paid for the lessons. But I want to give those lessons I learned to everyone possible so that they don't have to spend money on them if they don't have to. But Jade, you've been... You have... Honestly, it you, you have markedly improved. Even since our last episode. How so? You sound... It, one, you sound a little more comfortable talking in... At least to me. And two, you sound a little more soft-spoken. I, I do try, at least. It's uh, not easy. Like your continents are softer, your vowels are rounder. If that's yeah, what you're going for, you're doing a great th job. That's what I'm going for. I'm hoping uh, to be at least a little bit more soft spoken. And when the time comes, I hope to be at least as feminine sounding as you. You did you did say last episode that you want people to parrot their favorite voice actors and such, <laughs> and uh, try to mimic them at least a little bit. Don't you gonna make me blush? Oh, you, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, yeah, you're one of my favorite voice actors so far. Before you overload me, uh, Keito, how long have you been uh, training your voice? Uh, not much at all. Um, I've only recently, like in the past few months, came out as being trans, and I've only had two lessons with a coach, but I can't afford to do them regularly. 
Well, hey. Well, uh, Happy Index, for is, you. Is, Index is a great teacher. They've helped me a lot with it, and I didn't have to pay a cent. All you had to do was pay me in love and affection. And you also have to take care of the snippets. You know I already do that. <laughs> yes, yes, you, you do take you do take good care of the snippets. But yeah, Keto, uh, has has your coach gone over scales with you or anything like that, or have they just uh, like done the basic uh, alliteration tests? They did some very basic things where they're like, "Hey, here's this app. Uh, talk into it so I can get an idea of your vocal range. Uh, practice hitting these specific notes." Uh, try to speak with less vocal fry with my voice was one of the things she talked about. Um, she wanted me to practice breathing diaphragmatically. Okay, those are some good. Those are some good starting points. Uh, the one thing I have heard though is using apps can be harmful down the line, especially if they like give you an arbitrary. Oh, your voice sounds feminine. Oh, your voice sounds masculine. If you're comfortable with how you sound, that's what you should shoot for. Shoot for sounding comfortable to you, because you sound different to yourself than everyone else. I sound fine to me, and other people say I sound fine to them, but I wanted to be comfortable with me first, because the whole thing about this vocal dysphoria and all that, you should be comfortable with you first, not with what other people think. That's the main goal for me. I, I, I quite agree, because, uh, Honestly, when it came to my voice training, it was always something to do with uh, practicing it offline. Not easy, honestly, especially since um, you know, I'm a bit more sp softer spoken now, and uh, well, it, it's uh, people aren't noticing it because it's not that much of a difference, but right now it's getting better, I'd say. Yeah, Elise, I will say that. And agreed, Jade. Uh, th that's one of the things that sometimes apps will say. Uh, They'll, like, say, oh, you sound like you're in this vocal range, which is usually associated with males. It can also cause some spikes of dysphoria for some people, depending on how well they take criticism. I never used one of those apps. What I just did was recorded myself and listened to myself back and then just tried to work against myself every time. My vocal coach taught me, though, that uh, the big thing isn't about, uh, it's more about getting a hang of the scales. Because you have to treat your vocal cords like you're training a muscle. You can't just... Like I said, I started here. You cannot just jump to where I am, like that. You need to train it. It's, it's essentially, you can't start off bench pressing 500 pounds. You have to work your way up. You have to find where your limit is and then work from there. And that's why I always advocate scales and sloping your scales rather than staircasing. Do you know what I mean, Lena? Kajo? I was I about so. to say, I was about to say something. Um, yeah. Um, ever ever since I want to learn how to feminize my voice, it's because uh, this past summer I was thinking about transitioning. And this is the first time I felt so happy that I finally come out for all these years. I know their family members won't accept me for it, but I'm just going to continue on and keep pushing it. And one thing I'm planning on doing is to, uh, <clears throat> to work on my voice. Now, for example, uh, have I remember I sent you that clip from this game called Infernax? Uh, let's play uh, Index. Yes. And I showed you how I feminized my voice of one character. Yeah. I'm trying to learn how to maintain it. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm, essentially what you were doing is the equivalent of uh, deadlifting in a gym. Mm -hmm. Like just lifted a single. Wait to see how long you can hold it for. Uh, what we're trying to do with this is bench pressing and working your way up to heavier weights. Because your throat 
is just as much of a muscle as your biceps. So the metaphor works. All right. And, so, uh, oh. uh, Keijo, please, uh, t- tell, uh, tell me a little something. Uh, do you know what I mean when I say, uh, trying to work on scales and sloping them rather than staircasing them? Um, I assume a more gradual transition between notes instead of a sharp transition? Yes. So, my vocal coach would always have me count up, count down. Uh, from 1 to 10, 10 to 1. And whenever I started like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, she would stop me if I staircased at all. If I stepped and uh, had a little jump in my tone, we would work our way back and work our way from a softer range and be like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you train your voice more and you practice those scales and sloping, your slopes can be a lot steeper. And right. me, after about a year of that, you can hear the results. I'm able to uh, access a wide range and. Sometimes I push it a little too far, and I wind up hurting my throat still. And I, you have to be aware of that. Yeah, I've noticed that when I'm trying to train my voice. That I hurt my throat sometimes, but when that happens, I just stop and relax, you know? That's because why your best friend will be tea and honey. Well, uh, what was it, Lena? Uh, yeah, um, just like to say, um, um, I just like forgot to say something, uh, I I just want to try. I'm going to try this voice out. I'm going to try how it how it goes. <clears throat> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I think I'm. I don't know. A little. It takes that was a little steep, and it's yeah. It does take practice. Sorry, Jade. But uh. But yeah, I just want to say, like like Jade, um, uh, like Jade said, uh, you're the best teacher. Uh, in next time, we'll continue on uh, supporting you. I am not a professional teacher by any sense of the. Uh, word, but I am happy to use my talent to try and help people. Professional or not, you're definitely great. Yeah, you're you're great. I try to be a great supporter of everyone in the trans community, and I have this weird talent that I want to use to help everyone I can. Yeah, I, I actually kind of relate to that. I try to help people, too. Yeah. And it's... A burden sometimes, because sometimes people don't like that and don't really feel well, that they're being genuine about it. But that's for another day. I'm not going to say that and talk about that anymore. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for a time, yeah, even though, even though that, uh, your great help and everything. And sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel alone most of the times, but that's another time. Keith, are you okay? I'm alright. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, we have been going through a lot, so we're, we're just trying to, uh, trying to um, move on from it. Yeah. And I've been... Uh, we'll, we'll just say I've been helping her out. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. Keijo, what about you? Are you doing okay over there? Yep. I want to try and make sure... Every- this is the first time I've had a four-person episode. i used to having three people. So I want to try and make sure everyone gets a fair chance to talk. And I know I sometimes never shut the fuck up. So please, feel free to say, Index, shut the fuck up, let me talk. No, I'm not going to say that to you. I'll just say, pardon me, can you let me talk for a second like that? Like that? Because I want people to like people. Um, I always seem to say I'm the rude person in the conversation because so, well, I like to uh, interrupt people. But it's not something I do on purpose. I'm just trying to get, be a better person now. A dream stalker with the first time chat. Thank you for coming on in. I'll just uh, Thank you for lightly the raise my hand and wait to be called on. <laughs> yeah, let's have a static ping raiser hand. Yeah, I, did, I can do that already, <laughs> though. Look at me. <laughs> so, Keijo, uh, I'd like to ask you something. Hmm? We've covered scales. Uh, tell me a little bit about... Uh, 
has your vocal coach gone over like consonants and vowels with you? Nope. So, depending on the dialect and all that, you'll notice that a lot of uh, a lot of people in America tend to have the whole men emphasize the consonants more, whereas women emphasize vowels more. So, like, if I wanted to sound a little more emphatic in my words and masculine with a feminine tone, I would try to pronounce my consonants a little more. As you can hear, saying something like a little more sounds different than saying a little more. Hmm. So, a little bit different than what I expected. Honestly, for, for me, when it comes to consonants and vowels, it really doesn't matter, in my opinion. Because the whole thing for me, and from what you've taught me, is that um, tone and personality is what makes the um, quote-unquote woman. Or, so yeah. to speak, you know, quote-unquote per- trans person, I guess. I, I don't know how to really person say it. To- you know, person in total, whether you're trans, whether you're cis, whether you're... Person, yes. Whether uh, you're fluid, you. whether you're agender, no matter what, everyone can do with uh, voice training if they would like to. Whether they yes. want to use it for voice acting, whether they, they want to do it to sound a little more authoritative for public speaking, etc. I want this place to be for everyone. Yes, yeah, so I meant to say is like tone and personality is what makes the person, exactly. and that's how you that's how you um, make it your own in a way. Like, how do I say this? Jade is my character, and also me, in a way. But I'm trying to accentuate the fact that she's very much confident in herself, despite being soft-spoken. And that's what I try to, um, do. I'm just reminded of that, uh, meme now. How to deal with imposter syndrome. Gaslight yourself into believing in yourself. That's not exactly what I was thinking, but... I'm going to yeah. gaslight myself into being the best version of me I can be. Yeah, they say... I mean, oh, God. Yeah, like I say, um, for example, Lena, I want to make Lena as, you know, strong and authoritarian as possible as well. Not to mention she's good with fashion and stuff like that. You, you know, and of course, uh, sometimes she loves, <laughs> she loves like, uh, diamond rings and <clears throat> all that stuff, you know, like, like, uh, let's just say a girl's uh, best friend, sort of way. But in any case, chocolate and chocolate, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, chocolate, too. And I just want to say, I want to, uh, picture how Lena is and, you know, you know, make her as what she is and everything else. And, and, uh, sometimes, when it's 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 like, well, I just fantasize her as, you know, like an everyday woman sort of way, but yeah, that's what I'm think. That's what I'm saying. It's, I'm sorry, I'm just like mixed with words at the moment. It, it's like everything. It's like I'm trying to like learn not to do this whole word salad sort of way. It's practice, just like I said before. It takes a lot of practice to make sure that you have your voice the way you want it. Hey, Keijo, I have a question for you. What is your goal with your voice? What, where, where did, what is your goal to achieve with it? Just to sound more feminine in general with it. Do you have, like, a specific person or character in mind you'd like to sound more like? Uh, nobody in particular. I I try to avoid picking out a particular voice or particular style or anything like that, because I didn't know if it would be attainable, so I just wanted to work with what I have. I feel you there. But, uh, my coach did tell me that it can help you with, like, having a target in mind. Like, for me, when I started, I wanted to sound like Tristana from League of Legends. But I wound up sounding like Lulu from League of Legends. <laughs> and I'm perfectly fine with that, but... While I had that target in mind, it, like, kind of... 
was where I focused on, like, the pathology of that voice, that tone, wanting to try and get into that range. And, uh... <clears throat> As you can hear from me, uh, going from kind of here, I would manage to, uh... <clears throat> get into this range and talk about how things tasted purple. Tasted purple? That's Why? one of Lulu's vo that's one of Lulu's voice lines. Hmm. Oh I see. That You're tasted purple. Hair. Okay. <laughs> or I could see or if I could try to make Lena sound more leaderish type character, you know, make her brave, you know, know how to hold her ground and everything. Like for example <clears throat> All right ready to go how's that he said so it's practice though i'll i'll do my best uh-oh oh no i got jalapeno hiccups oh no oh no <laughs> uh, uh, girls you talk, that, talk, that talk amongst yourselves for that <laughs> Oh yeah, you got the, the pizza thing that happened. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so <laughs> okay, okay, the piece. Oh my god, jalapenos are the bomb when it comes to pizza. Even, even uh, have Chipotle, even Chipotle on pizza. We were talking about ourselves, not pizza. But e either way, <laughs> <laughs> if 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 we're talking, if we're or if we're quote unquote transitioning from that spot to the, to this one, I'd say the um best way to do that is saying that how uh. A different sort of foods are also different. Different when it comes to voices. So, how I m mean that you probably you probably might wonder. So, what I mean is that like sometimes their voice is also based on something that's different. And what what uh, certain foods also help me make my voice different sometimes. So, again. If you want to relax your throat, for example, try to help yourself get yourself to a more uh, softer spoken touch tone like I am right now, it's I often try to eat something frozen, something something like a frozen treat or something like that. Helps me helps them relax the muscles in, in a way. However, yeah. if I'm trying to get something a little bit <laughs> um, higher or probably a bit more um, excitable, I eat something spicy, and. <sighs> That, that that's also something that, that's helped it a little bit with uh, the voice training. I've never heard of using that technique. I might try it. Or yeah, or from what I heard, uh, what I from what I heard, you can like uh, make your voice sound like Kermit the Frog, uh, and you know just to tune up your voice in order for you to get to it. Like where it's like, hello there, Kermit the Frog here, and uh, you know Kermit the VTuber here, here to talk to you today about the Rainbow Connection. We're talking about the lovers. <laughs> The dreamers and me. <laughs> la 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 la. It's okay to be green. <laughs> I, I I'm pretty sure it is. Speaking from experience. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question of all three of you. Okay. Seeing how we're recapping previous episodes, I'd like to do a little question for you three, based on episode two. Let's say I asked you to do. An English accent. What's your, what is your, uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, is Tracer English? I forget. Yes, Tracer is English. <laughs> because then, yeah, Tracer comes to mind. Or, or, um, or I could, like, or I could go for a little old school. Like, for example, the characters from Dragon Quest Eight, for example, especially Jessica Albert. She could have this whole awesome British ac accent. Well, what I meant was, depending on what region of England we're talking about, your voice will sound a lot different depending on the accent, because it's not just the accent itself. It's about where you're trying to sound from. Well, because not... each and every region has its own dialect. For example, we're, we could be talking about, uh, we could be talking about Sussex, we could be talking about the Cockney accent, we could be talking about the Highland. But there's so many different accents in England, in Ireland, in Scotland, in every single country in the world because 
every single country in the world is a big place and they can all sound slightly different from one another. Like, hell! You you ask someone about an American accent, you if you're from America, you're like, what fucking part of America are you fucking talking about? You're talking about the East Coast, the West Coast, you're talking about Hawaii, you're talking about California, you're talking about Florida? You're talking about Texas? You was talking about, uh, uh, what was that one thing? Uh, did, uh, I was trying to sound like Joey Wheeler, who has got the, um... <laughs> hey, uh, we're talking about the heart of the cards here, Yog. The Brooklyn accent, that's what it was. Or you say something about Texas, like, what you say, what you say about Texas. <laughs> Little Spongebob. <laughs> Can we say that Texas is stupid? No, don't say Texas is stupid. <laughs> Can we say speak from, from Texas are stupid? Oh, come on, you guys, enough <laughs> with that bit. So, okay. uh, let's, let's have Keijo talk a little bit. Uh, how has your journey been so far with voice training? With uh, ha have you like announced it to the world yet, or anyone? Uh, I mean, I said that I would be doing it. Um, I, I believe I announced on Twitter a while ago. Um, I tried afterwards to just watch YouTube videos and see if I could figure it out myself because I didn't want to pay for it. Uh, but I really couldn't get any sort of coherent help from YouTube videos. Maybe I just didn't find good ones. Yeah, YouTube. Uh, hmm? YouTube's rabbit hole is. It can sometimes be a little. Eh. But hey, that's why yeah. you're here. And I'd yeah. love to have you for another episode. Of course. But, uh... Have, have you hit, like, any particular walls? Do, can I offer any tips or anything? Can I... How, how can I help you? How can I help everyone here? Honestly, I just don't really know where to start with it, because anything that i found anybody's talking about, they're like, do this drill, like, you know, like big dog, small dog, or focus on raising your larynx, or focus on breathing this way, and it's like... Yeah. That's good and all, but what do I do with that? I have I, no idea. It's almost, that like, it's almost like art. Uh, you need to find what works for you. You need to find <clears throat> the technique that works for you, what is comfortable with you. Every vocal coach teaches different things, uh, but... What worked for me the most was scales and having a target. I basically got to where I am just doing scales and having a target for voice acting. And again, scales might not work for everyone, but they are a good starting point, like a good way to like train your vocal cords to be ready to go up and down. Mm-hmm. But... Going down the YouTube rabbit hole can lead you to so many different uh, caveats, tangents, and all that, that it's hard to tell what you, what's right, what's wrong, when nothing is right, nothing is wrong. It's a matter of, uh, what works for you? Because, it again... It's just like art. If you look at, like, how to draw a hand on YouTube, you'll see so many different examples and, like, here's how to draw a hand. Here's how to draw a hand. Hey, here's how to draw a hand. Oh, over here. Look at this. This is another way to draw a hand. They all have different techniques. Right. And it's a matter of uh, examining them, understanding them, and then figuring out what works for you. Uh, girls, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna make my tea early. Uh, you talk amongst yourselves. Alright. I'll be so, right back. Alright. So, I was gonna say is that, yeah, this index is completely correct. You should have some sort of target of what your voice wants to sound like. Doesn't mean you can't, um, obtain, um, this doesn't mean you can't be sounding like like them 
what I mean is, for example, my target is to sound either like Shantae or Hanata from Naruto. Mm -hmm. Shantae from Shantae or, or, or Hanata, you know, from Naruto. So far, Hinata is my goal because um, she's a very much most soft spoken no. person and she's got a bit of higher range to her. But I do want to eventually work up to Shantae, well, who is confident, kind, and very, very much um, feminine. <clears throat> but I do want to um, start off with Hinata and possibly go a great way from there. Do you have any voices that you like to um, sound like, or at least, or at least, some sort of goal? If not, what um, what would you have in mind? I never uh, actually thought about it. All right. Well, uh, what's well, your well, character? Oh, sorry. I, I was just trying to say that. Like, what is your character like? What do you imagine they sound like? Uh... Never thought about that either, because my character has <laughs> always been more like an extension of me rather than being a separate character. What I meant was like they do have, they are an extension of you. Most people's uh, characters are an extension of you. But what I mean is like, what do you imagine that their voice sounds like? Even though you know they're female, if they have their own voice. What, who do you imagine would voice act for them? I'm back while it's fine. If you had something like that in mind. Well, I'd have to think on that. Uh, okay. Good some thought. Yes, uh, yeah? Yeah, like for example, uh, I want to uh, picture my character sound like Taya Gardner from Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, <laughs> without the power of friendship speech. That's a deep and, cut. <laughs> and Babs Bunny from Tiny Toon Adventures. Which I grew up watching Tiny Two Adventures, and you know how Babs is, and she's like she's so energetic and more entertaining, and and of, and of course she's 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 a well-known actress. Yeah, she's trying to be an actor. You know, like in uh, Tiny Two Adventures, Babs' big break for the uh, Game Boy, that she wants to be an act. She wants to be an actress and everything. And, but even in episodes of Tiny Toons, right? That that she trying to become uh, an actress in the Shakespeare play. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, not to mention she's a comedian too. So you know, because yeah, she does these it's a living. Crazy, she she does these crazy expressions, like you know, crazy impressions from like uh, like uh, like Roseanne. Uh, what else? Uh, Lucy, yeah, Lucille Ball, and you know Joan Rivers and stuff like that. I grew. It's like I grew up with that show, and Babs Bunny is my inspiration. What we basically talked about earlier, well, while you left the deck, is that what we kind of had for our goals for what our voice would sound like, not necessarily being exactly the same, but sound like it. So mine was Inata from Naruto. And Shantae from Shantae. Oh, and I forgot to add Popful Mail because <laughs> I love that game so much as well. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. And, <laughs> After Burner from Jalapeno. Oh, God. I'm okay. Uh, uh, are you okay? Yes. Uh, do you have any like frozen fruit bars or treats that around? No! no, I just I just coughed and I had like I had afterburner jalapeno juice hit me in the throat. Oh my mm. gosh! Oh god! Dummy, oh. dummy! Oh, dummy, 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 oh, dummy, dummy, no. So I where I was going? Oh, I should go check on the tea. It should be finished pouring yeah, by now. Yeah, okay, to help. To, ans to answer uh, Bridgewater, a uh, popful mail for the uh, Sega CD. For the that's... Sega CD, and Oof, most... if you if you love the uh, if you love the Wonder Boy games, that's the game that you enjoy. How about you explain the concepts? And some of us are pretty uh, are probably younger in terms of gaming experience. Okay. Um. Okay. Powerful Mail is a video game. Uh, based, it's like 
she yeah, Mel, she's a bounty huntress. Um who who's trying to go after this uh this um go after this uh, guy go by the name of Nutscracker. And when all else fails, she she found another bounty go by the name of uh Muttonhead. But however, Muttonhead is in cahoots with some sort of evil um some uh evil uh eat some evil villain trying to trying to like uh raise trying to raise the overlord from uh, from the existence to the existence and now mel is caught caught into this um uh, this whole uh, <clears throat> entire mission to get the orbs just to stop the overlord from coming along with um <clears throat> Along with characters like uh, Tot and Tato and uh, speaking not, yeah, of Tato nuts and, and all uh, that, uh, I have a uh, not infused rooibos tea called Forever Nuts. Yeah, Tato no, and Gaul. I... <laughs> Tato and Gaul. There he goes. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just explaining to Bridgewater what this game is. Then again, I think only two of them were active, voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about that index. You're fine. Let me just take a moment to say it. <clears throat> and a little mommy, let me whisper in your ear. Let me tell you something you might like to hear. <laughs> it's free real estate. No. Oh, I know. Oh, you know the game? Nice. Anyways, uh, where do we leave off? Right. Um, so I want to talk about the future for the podcast. This is completely an unscripted podcast, right? I want the episodes to try and stay on topic, and I'm perfectly fine with them going off tangents because just having a podcast about a voice lesson is a little hard. Hence why we sometimes have an episode like this where we just shoot the shit. But some future episodes we are going to have are going to be about impressions... And, uh, the mandala effect that comes with those impressions. Singing, which singing and voice acting together is a goddamn beast in and of, in and of itself. Like, if, if have you ever tried to sing outside of your normal voice? I've it tried it a little bit, but starts it's not drifting that easy. back to your normal tone of voice, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Oh. I got my head up a sunroof. I blasted my favorite tunes. I know I get one thing on my mind. How's that? Decent. Again, okay. practice. <laughs> so, uh, we got about 12, 20 minutes left in this episode. Because this, this is mostly just like a little recap because I needed to get the podcast back on track after Comcast decided to uh, basically do the thing from Invincible where uh, Omni-Man punches Mark into the mountain. It wasn't thinking right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you do you want us to talk right now? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I, I, I just want to say, Comcast was treating me like Omni Man treated Mark. I have been struggling with that ISP for the longest time. And they, like, tried to say, oh, we're sorry, it still has to do with Hurricane Ian that happened weeks ago. And also, I'm in the Midwest. We had no hurricane weather at all. So, how could they say uh, something that didn't even touch us affected us? Silly, Mark. It's it's not it's not Hurricane Ian. It's our own bullshit. Think, Comcast. Think. <laughs> or or Comcast trying to come to you as like, yeah, say something like, you know, there is a plan A, but there is a plan B. <sighs> There's always a plan B. And then Comcast hits you with a head with a chair. <laughs> Christ. So, yeah, like, uh, like WWE. 
I just want to say to you three, thank you for being here. Even though this was like completely, we lost, we lost track of the schedule. And then this was last minute. Um, going forward, the episodes will be a little more coherent. Going forward, our episodes will be more slightly scripted, I want to say. Not entirely scripted, because I can't script other people's reactions and everything. But, like, but okay, it's at this then. point, but I should be moving on to this topic. You basically are a baseline then, right? Yeah. So I, I just want to, I, I want the podcast to be... Again, this is, I've never I've never had a podcast before. I hope it's doing good. Uh, episode one is nearly at 150 views. Ooh, nice. Which is and great considering like I'm completely indie and not using shorts or anything. In other words, uh, probably the next episode I'll probably go tone down the rambling. Oh, I like try to have different guests on every week. Gotcha. So, Depending on uh, who's there or not. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Next week, I'm hoping to have Elise Vermillion and Hemlock. All right. <laughs> who I will be reaching out to both to see if they are available. And the time we record might change for certain guests. But I'm really, uh, really happy you guys were here today. Thank you so much. Of Dang, course. No problem. Thank you and for having us. In uh, index, I will keep practicing no matter what. I mean, I don't care if it takes months or years. I will keep practicing. Oh, and by the way, I used to do uh, I used to do a, a voice changer, but I stopped doing that. I help with that. Yeah. Anyways, you wanted to say something, Kejo? I was just saying thank you for having us. Oh yeah, and I'd love to have you guys on for other episodes too. Uh, after after season one of the Transcribecast is over. I've been thinking about season two and all that. And because if if this is going to be a regular thing, I want season two to be focused not on voice acting, but on art movements throughout history. Like, uh, let's talk about Dadaism and how it affected society as it is today. Let's talk about uh, Cubism. Let's talk about the period of Salvador Dali. Let's talk about all sorts of stuff like that. So here's a question for you next. Do video games count as art? Yes. Because they've impacted the history quite well. Heck, without video games, we probably wouldn't even have VTubers. Just my, just my own personal opinion, of course. The original video game, Pong, was more of an experiment than art. But... It spawned an entire art movement. Look at what video games can do now. They could be specifically about saying a message. They could be specifically about oh, this self-contained story. They could be about. Uh, I mean, right, look, look, the, look at a game like, like Final movies, Fantasy right? 14. Yeah, look at a game like Final Fantasy 14. That is a goddamn masterpiece of art. Like, for example, and I'm not just when... talking about the Dragon Girls. Yes, and. And I'm going to say this right now: is I mean, what? if we went from Pac-Man, with you know, well, from Pac-Man, which is uh, the Jap, well, I mean, we went from Pac-Man to Overwatch. I mean, this is how far we got got to in uh, video games. But we're getting off Overwatch. topic. Yeah, we're getting off topic. Let's uh, move yeah. back on. Sorry. Yeah, if we want to get if we want to get off topic, we can go to a mall. Is, 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 is that a joke that tracks? Is Off Topic still in business? Oh, no, I'm thinking about Hot Topic. God, God damn it! <laughs> hot Topic. You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm going to see myself out of here. Bye. Oh, okay. Later. She's not actually really gone. She's doing that for her podcast or something? I don't know. Uh, but either way, uh, now that she's gone, let's talk about some awesome things like video games. Hello! Oh, she's back. Never mind. No, oh, she's back. <laughs> Just pamp it. <laughs> um, Oh, yeah, oh. That, that's right, Pamphlet, the, the other it's character. Pamphlet! Here for your kneecaps. <laughs> good, good, good luck. <laughs> hey, 
Oh so, God! Oh, she didn't come next. Come towards me. <laughs> anyways, uh, I want to say next episode we should be talking about impressions, and then episode six we'll be talking about singing. Uh, after that, I'm going to consult with my guests about like what would you like to talk about specifically. Like, is there something in speech pathology you'd like to talk about that uh, piques your interest? Would you like to focus on accents? Would you like to focus on something specifically? Let me know. I have an idea. What's up? So, let's talk about um, different tones and personality. You know, I, I, like I mentioned before, tones and personality and how they affect the, your speaking. How, I think that might so? be fun. How so? Well, what I mean is like, eh, um, voice acting is a very a big thing in in life now. So what I meant by tone and personality is that you basically we basically talk about different kinds of voice acting, how it's got, gone through its stages, from movies to video games and other such things. Yeah, we could also talk about how uh, voice acting has evolved as an industry like if, if we want to talk about classic voice acting uh, I, I'm sure you've heard some classic voice acting from uh, the 90s or stuff like that yeah I, I have have you played have you ever played the classic Resident Evil and heard the voice acting in that it's sure it has. he's dead Mark is dead. Like, put some fucking soul into it, Christ! Oh no! How awful! Mark is dead! Oh my gosh! Ah! Something like that? Yeah, but like, classic voice acting was almost. <sighs> the VA in Resident Evil was 12 out of 10. <laughs> Shut up, Auntie! But. Yeah, uh, we're gonna wrap up the episode around here because this was just supposed to be like a recap and get the podcast back on track. I'd like to thank my guests for being here. I'd like to invite uh, them to come back for a later episode as well. Uh, going forward, I think it might be a little easier to have only two guests so there's less talking over each other. We did try not to do that. I know, I know. But... It's hard to tell when, like, we can't see each other on camera and all that. But it, uh, it's it's awesome to have everyone here. Nothing wrong with it. Did you want to say something, Kichu? I can tell you if you want to say something. Mm, no, just vibing. That's it? Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, uh, Bridgewater, if we want to talk about bad voice acting, we could talk about uh, ghost stories voice acting. Or we could talk about <laughs> the original track <Dragon> policy. <laughs> but, yeah, again, my guests today have been Jade Callisto, one half of... Nut. One half of Nut, apparently. One half of the Backlog Babes. <laughs> I mean, you're almost... You weren't, you weren't, correct about, you weren't incorrect about the Nut either, but it's whatever... <laughs> Okay, I'm being weird. Uh, when I have, I'm one half back all babes. My other is Lena Quisto. Yeah, and sorry if I've been talking over you guys. Sorry about that. And our third guest today is a much. She is my senpai in the VTuber community, but she is my kohai when it comes to voice acting. She is. On her way to becoming an amazingly amazing voice actress, though. Keijo Cove, the Autumn Witch! Woo. Hello? Woo, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, you, you just <laughs> cut in for like a second of. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and again, you guys are all invited back to later episodes. I would love to have you. Hi, Hantome. I would love to have you back. I might 
even have episodes that are just like a single guest. I don't know. It's my podcast. <laughs> Apparently, I learned I make the rules. Huh. So here's a question next before we before we wrap up. Um, what are your thoughts on you know? all this so far like how did we do uh so i it's, guess it's great having everyone here sometimes the tangents can be a little long-winded and i don't want to upset anyone by interrupting and say let's get back on topic because i don't want to be authoritarian about this and uh i i i, I just want to try to make sure everyone gets their equal time to talk I know this isn't a format that everyone's used to, but it's something that uh, I've really wanted to try for the longest time and experiment with, and I want to say thank you to my guests tonight. Thank you to all of my guests I have had. You guys have all been amazing for helping me make this happen. I'm happy we can reach out to people and help them out. You're very welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. For now, though, YouTube, thank you for being here. I'm going to stop the recording here. We have some banter to do before the next section of the stream. YouTube, bye bye.